Thanks, everybody, and uh, thanks for coming out today. Um, <clears throat> you know, I really like teaching Lightroom, and the reason I like teaching it is because it is such a powerful tool. So, for me, I'm kind of from the old school, and my camera was uh, wood and leather, and that's kind of, that's how I came, you know, to be a photographer. Um, so the darkroom was my home. 40 hours a week in the darkroom, black fingernails, nosebleeds from the chemical, the whole nine yards. Ah, so much better, mm -hmm. so much better. Um, this is such an awesome program, folks, because it really stands on the shoulders of giants, right? Photoshop has been around for over 20 years. It's made all the mistakes and come up with all the great discoveries or has purchased great discoveries. And Lightroom was developed on top of all that. So we come to a place in digital photography where Lightroom is just really lean and mean and it's a super awesome program. <coughs> so the ability to um, not only uh, organize your images, but more importantly, in my opinion, to uh, to make them better, to craft a really fine image is what Lightroom is all about. And it does it really well. So before we can get into crafting the fine print, which is this afternoon, we've got to talk about organizing. And we've got to talk about how we're gonna deal with all of these images. Now, Lightroom is, I would say for the most part, it's a fairly intuitive program once you get a few bits of very, very important information, which we're gonna talk about. Um, People make a lot of mistakes when they're first starting off with Lightroom. And has anyone made any, like, where's that image? What's that question mark doing on that image? And why do I have images on this laptop and this desktop and this hard drive? Nightmare scenarios, right? That's why this is called uh, uh, Order from Chaos. Well, I'm going to address some of those problems a little bit later in this class. Uh, what happens when you have multiple catalogs, so on and so forth. But before I begin with that, I want to introduce you guys and really help you learn the structure, the bones, how Lightroom works. Because once you know that, it's really not hard to figure the rest out on your own. All right? So I want to start off with the idea of uh, <laughs> the triumvirate, the three. All right? Lightroom itself is based on three very separate parts. Okay, you have Lightroom, the program. Now, that's just like any other program. You've got Microsoft Word, you've got email programs, all of these things, okay? Lightroom is just a program. Now, you also have your photographs, okay? And then you have this elusive sort of thing called the Lightroom catalog. That's the three. The program, the catalog, and your images. And when you understand the way these three react with one another, or interact, then you've got the whole organization problem licked, all right? So, what a lot of people think, for starters, is that um, you import your images into Lightroom. And I suppose they think that's because that's what we always say. Well, I'm gonna import my images onto, into Lightroom and work with them. But the fact of the matter is, is your images are not in Lightroom. No more, then a Word document is in Microsoft Word, right? So imagine this, you guys, somebody, somebody hands you a document, emails you a document, and you save that image. Do you save it to Microsoft Word? No, you save it to a folder inside of your hard drive. But when you open it, you open it in Microsoft Word, okay? So Lightroom is a program. Now, the other thing is that, um, we don't store our images in Lightroom, the program, and we don't actually store them in the catalog either. We store them in a hard drive, and I'll give you guys a visual in just a second. So the catalog, the third of the three, is a record. It's a database, people. It's a record of your images, all right? So imagine this. I launched Lightroom for the very first time. There's nothing in there. It's just a shell of a program. Now, there's a catalog associated with it. And I have, let's say, three folders on my, uh, in, my, in my pictures folder, and they're filled with photographs. Now, I import those images into Lightroom. What's happened is those images still live where they're supposed to live in my folders on my desktop. But the catalog has made a record 
okay, image number one looks like this. Image number two looks like this, image number three. So what we're seeing in Lightroom is not actually the real photograph, it's a thumbnail of the photograph, all right? Let me show you guys. So <clears throat> the first time I, uh, um, I launched Lightroom, it's going to create a folder for me. And what that folder is going to be is a, um, it's going to be a Lightroom folder, all right? And inside of that Lightroom folder, I'm going to have something called Lightroom settings and backups. And I'm also going to have something called my LRCAT, my Lightroom catalog folder, all right? So here comes the three, you guys. If you look at my computer at the top, you'll see how I have uh, my name. You know, you have your user, that's my name. And inside of application lives the Lightroom program, okay? That's one of the three. Now, the second of the three is another folder called um, Lightroom, and that's where our catalog lives, all right? And then in a separate folder, like maybe inside of my pictures folder again, I've got a folder called photographs, and these are my actual real images, okay? So we've got the three, Lightroom the program, the catalog, and our images. Yes? When you're importing your pictures for the first time, yes. it's supposed to go onto a hard drive and then enter here? The question is, is when you're importing images for the first time, are they supposed to go onto a hard drive or into here? Now, that's a good question, and um, I I'll answer that question. Um, forgive me, you guys, if I don't take a lot of questions. We're recording right now, so I'm going to reserve questions. So, no, no, it's all good. We're going to re reserve some questions towards the end. It was just habit. I was like, yes, what? All right, so we'll reserve questions towards the end. Um, the first time that you ever make a, a, a Lightroom catalog, the first time you open it, what is going to happen? And let's see if I can actually just do this for you guys. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to quit out of Lightroom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down my Alt key. Now, Macintosh. If you're on a PC, hold down your Control key. And when you double click the Lightroom icon, you're going to kind of go in the back door. All right. So here you can see I have several different catalogs. All right, so I'm going to pretend that I am launching Lightroom for the first time. This is what's going to happen. When I launch Lightroom for the first time, it's going to say, oh, OK, great. Welcome to Lightroom, you know? And uh, where do you want to put your folder? Notice at the top here, you guys, it says, create folder with new catalog. So if I was to call this Tim's Lightroom, then what would happen is it's going to create this catalog someplace. So I will put it in the pictures folder where it wants me to default. And there it is, and I hit create. Now what happens is Lightroom starts, and it's got a catalog that's associated with it now. But of course, there is no images that are going to be in here. So now it's time for me to import images. Well, you guys, when you're importing images, and I'm going to go over this in depth when we go to the import process, OK? When you import images, it's up to you to tell them where they go. This is the big key. Where are your images going to go? All right. That is a decision that you have to make. All right. Let me tell you how I work, and then you guys can decide for yourselves what you're going to do. All right. I'm going to quit out of that catalog and reopen up my uh, regular Lightroom catalog now. <clears throat> and I want you guys to notice that on my, uh, I have a little external hard drive plugged in. Okay. And on my external hard drive, I only have three folders in there. I like things simple. Small brains, simple solutions. This is simple. Three folders, right? Here, I have all of my Lightroom photos. Here is my Lightroom catalog. And inside the Lightroom catalog, you can see Lightroom for LRCAT. That's my actual catalog itself. Okay, And then I have a B&H catalog, of course. Something else very important in there. All right. <laughs> Anytime you actually double click on the Lightroom catalog itself, it forces it to open up 
that particular catalog. So if you're working with multiple uh, Lightroom catalogs, which I recommend you do not do, then that's the way to get to it. All right, so here we go. This is my solution for starting Lightroom from the beginning, all right? On my computer is Lightroom, the application, right? So here's my username inside my application folder. There's Lightroom, the program, just like Microsoft Word. But on my external drive, I actually have stored the Lightroom catalog and all of my photographs. Now, why would I do this? I do this because I want my photographs and my catalog all in one place. This way, when I, let's say, go home and work on my desktop, I can take my external drive and plug it in and I can launch my Lightroom catalog because I have Lightroom, the program, on my desktop. All right. When I'm on the road, I plug this hard drive in to my laptop. Same exact catalog, same exact images. It's all in one nice, easy place. This is what I recommend for most people. Now, if you're the type of person that um, only wants to work on one computer, that's all you're going to do, then what I highly recommend is this method over here. All right? Which means in your applications folder, you'll have Lightroom the program. And then inside of your pictures folder, are you guys all able to follow the di diagram here? In the pictures folder, you'll have all of your photographs and you'll have one folder that contains your Lightroom catalog. All right, so we're back to the three folks, Lightroom the program, Lightroom catalog, and your images. All right, now, when you first open up Lightroom, this will all get defaulted to this particular hierarchy, okay? So most of you are probably working with something similar to this. This only becomes an issue when you start losing images. <laughs> Where did they go? Okay, and the reason you've lost images is because some may live on one drive, some may live on another computer, and so on and so forth. That's where the problem comes in. And that can all be easily remedied by always using one catalog, and when you import the images, you pay attention to where they're going. That's the bottom line. All right. So, questions? Yes, ma'am. What you just said, pay attention to where they're going. Mm -hmm. I, I doesn't usually say uh, we're going to leave it where it is on the hard drive. I mean, so it's still there. It's not going anywhere. That the question is, is where are they going? Don't isn't it just going to the hard drive, or aren't they just staying there? That's entirely up to you. You decide where you want them to go. And I'm going to show you that when we do the import. All right? Um, I'll make that very clear. Yes, ma'am. I just started with Lightroom, and um, I haven't got the courage up to import through Lightroom, so I still import the Photoshop elements. Oh, dear. On my hard drive. And then from there, I can put it into Lightroom. Okay. You're going to have to stop that. You're going to have to stop that right away. Yeah, you don't want to import them through Elements. You guys, importing your images through Lightroom is what it's all about. It's, this, is, this is going to be the easiest thing in the world. All right? So let me do, a, let me do, a, let me do a, an import for you guys, and I think, this is going to, I think this is going to help you. All right, so I've got a memory card here. I was just out west at the Hoover Dam and uh, got some images on this memory card. And so <clears throat> let me go ahead and, uh, and import them. So first of all, in case you guys didn't see that, I went very quickly. I'm just going down to this import button right here and I click. All right, now, this is arguably the most important box in, in Lightroom, all right? Now, I've been caught on this myself, but this is what I always tell my students. If you wanna learn Lightroom, what you need to do is read the screen. I promise you. I promise you, if you read the screen. We're so accustomed to just making quick choices and moving on. If you read the screen, you will not get fouled up. 
All right. What we're going to do in our import dialog box to understand it completely is we're going to start from left and work to the right. Okay. So up here it says from. This is where my images are coming from. At this point it says Nikon D4. So that's telling me it's coming off of this device which is plugged in. All right, I don't know if y'all can, let me make this a little bigger so y'all can see this. All right, now, if I wanted to import images, and let's take a step back now for a second, I've just installed Lightroom for the first time, and I've got images on my hard drive. I want to import them. If I wanted to do that, why then, I would point to my laptop, and I would go into my folder with my images and import them. Make sense, you guys? All right. But this time, I'm importing from my camera. So that's our source. Now, as we move across the top, you're going to see copy is DNG, copy, move, and add. This is what's going to happen to the images as they become imported. And if you just think about this for a second, it's not that hard to understand, especially since it gives you a definition right below them. Copy photos to a new location and add to catalog. Okay, that means it's going to erase the images off my card? No, no it's going to copy the images off my card and move them to a new location. That means I have to decide where they're going to go. All right. Um, copy is DNG. I'll come back to that in a second, but it's basically the same thing. Now, if I was to choose move, it won't let me do that on a card, but um, if I was to choose move, let's see here. Move tells us, moves the photos to a new location and adds them to the catalog. And add says, add photos to the catalog without moving them. So we've got a lot of choices here. The difference between add and copy is add simply says move photos to a new location. Okay, so now let's remember you guys, I'm coming off of a memory card here, correct? And um, if I move the images off the card and into my Lightroom library, are the images gonna remain on my card? No, that's a problem you guys. You do not want your memory cards being um, formatted by your computer. Your memory cards are for your camera only. Having your computer move them starts messing with the card itself, okay? And you don't want that. So, whenever you're coming off of a memory card, you're either choosing copy as DNG or copy. All right? When you are bringing images off of your own hard drive or an external hard drive or somebody's flash drive or something like that, then you have the choice of move or add. So I think the two most common techniques we would use is come off of a memory card, choose copy. If you have images already on your hard drive, you would just choose add. Make sense, everyone? Okay, so this is very important. And this area here is gonna set up what happens to our right-hand side, all right? And I didn't tell you guys this, but it should be understood that uh, when I click on my D4, these are all the thumbnails of what's on that memory card. I figured that kind of went without saying, all right? So these are all the memory card pictures. Now, <clears throat> we're coming from a source on our left. On the top is telling us what's going to happen during the import, copy, move, or add. And then when we come over to this right-hand side, this is where there's a lot of options we have to pay attention to. Okay, so where are they gonna go to? I have copy as a DNG here. I have that um, highlighted, which means they're gonna go someplace. Well, this tells you where they're gonna go. And this says they're gonna go to my laptop in my pictures folder. Well, at this point, they might just get dumped into my pictures folder, I don't know. Okay, so this is a problem, we gotta pay attention here. All right, so let's move all the way to the bottom to where it says destination. You'll notice 
that my pictures folder is highlighted here because that's where it says it's going to go. Now, if I wanted to create a new folder in here, let's say I'm doing my organization by, um, let's say I want to start doing it by date. So I think, okay, I'm going to create a 2012 folder. Or let's say, yeah, 2012. We'll pretend it's June. All right. Now, I can create that 2012 folder by going up to the very top here where it says into subfolder. All right. I can't express to you guys enough how important this whole area is. This is where you're going to make all your mistakes and it's going to cause you all the stress. All right. But if we just look at it, we're okay. Right now it's going into Tim's pictures into a subfolder that has no name. All right. So I'll just name this um, 2012. Now look what happens down here. It creates that folder and this is kind of grayed out. See that? With a little plus mark meaning it's going to create that folder for me. That's cool. So 2012 is being created inside of pictures. Awesome. All right. Now the next part, and this is very important you guys, in case I haven't stressed that yet. It says organize into one folder or by date. Hmm. If I go into one folder, it just looks like this, 2012. But look what happens when I choose by date. Oh, now it's creating more folders. So now it's creating a 2012 folder and it's creating one on the 16th and one on the 17th. All right. This is where all the action is, you guys. You decide what you're going to do. All right. Let me give you two, there's many, but let me give you two possible ways to organize your images. Some people are good with numbers. They know very clever things like what the day of the week is and like what that number is associated with that or the months. I love that. It's like, what month is August? People know right away. They'll say eight or whatever it is. I'm terrible with numbers. If you ask me where I was on the 5th of January in 2011, I have no idea. It makes no sense to me. But some people are good with that sort of thing. So you might want to organize your images by date. All right? That doesn't work for me. For me, I'm more of a visual person and less number oriented, so I can remember exactly where I shot something. Somebody says, I need a photograph of an arnica. It's like, okay, I know exactly where I photographed arnica. I was in Colorado, and it was on the Yankee Boy Basin Trail, and I can go right to that folder, Colorado, into Yankee Boy Basin and find that picture. All right. So the other way to do it is by subject matter. All right. And for me, my subject matter starts with very simple things, locations. Because I travel a lot and I shoot a lot in different places, I put locations. Inside of locations, my folder is USA and then, you know, whatever, Canada, Bruges, Scotland, whatever, you know. Then inside of the USA, then I have all the 50 states. And then inside of the 50 states, I'll have, you know, maybe the national parks or something and the cities within that state. That's how I organize. That makes sense to my little brain. You guys have to come up with something that makes sense to you and stick with it. So maybe it's going to be for you, maybe it's going to be family photos, friends photos, vacation photos, right? And then inside of them, you can parse those out into different folders. Okay? Question? If you want to change the location, you know, you've decided, oh, you know, this arrangement's not good, I want to... I'll come to that. I'll come to that. That's two things we've got to get back to with you now, isn't it? No worries. We're going to come to it. Yes? Instead of the 2012, I'd name that the location if it was a specific location. You can jump down by dates. Yes, so now I'm not going by dates because dates make me nervous. <laughs> so instead of 2012, what I'm going to say is that this was in Nevada. Yeah. And then I'm not going to go by date, but I'm going to go into one folder. And now I have a Nevada folder inside of my pictures folder. Okay? So, one other question, then I'm going to move on. Why 
Okay, you guys, check this out. Um, you know how uh, when you're working on your computer, uh, you have uh, the ability to work in your what's called a finder window or uh, you know this area, you guys, what do they call it, Windows Explorer window or something like that? Okay, you, you all know that you can change the names of these folders, right? And you can add new folders and you can move images or, 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 or documents in between these folders. You can do all the same exact stuff in Lightroom, exactly in the same manner. So you can create any kind of system you want and then change it. I mean, I, I recommend sticking with one system, but what I mean to say is that right now in my system, here is my folder hierarchy um, right here. Whoops, sorry you guys. Here's my folder hierarchy right here, and you guys see that I have um, locations, and inside of locations, USA, Australia, Bahamas, so on and so forth. Inside of USA, I've got all my states. Okay, well, if I don't like that, I could easily go into Arizona and simply right-click, and this is a lesson for you guys, anything you want to do in Lightroom, you can right-click, and it'll tell you what to do, right? So if I simply right-click, it says create a folder inside of there, rename that folder, move to another folder, whatever you want to do. So I could rename that folder and call that 2012. And then I could take all these subfolders and change them to dates. You see what I'm saying, you guys? So what's most important is when you're importing, you get them to go to the place you want. Then as far as moving images around, no problem. You could just drag and drop. So for example, if I wanted to, um, take these, uh, these four images right here, and I wanted to move them to another folder, I would grab right in the center here. Now, I say that because Lightroom is very sensitive to touch. All right? We don't want to give this an improper touch here. If you click here, it does one thing. If you click here, it does another thing. If you click here, it does another thing. So you click right on the image itself and just drag them to whatever folder you want them to go into. It's easy. All right? So, well, you don't do it at the import folder. This is what I'm saying. This is what you can do afterwards. All right. So let me get back to the import, you guys. Um, as I'm importing now, these images were actually shot in, um, in Nevada. But oh, wait, look at some of these are in Arizona. So I am not going to fret and worry and think, oh, I want to organize half of these by date and half of these go into a Nevada folder and the other half go into Arizona folder. That would be insanity. I'm just going to import them. And then I can move them wherever the heck I want. Right? Easy peasy. Yep, and I'm going to cover that. I'm going to get to that. So you guys, here we go. I'm copying as a DNG. I want to put them into my pictures folder. All right. And um, what I'm going to do is create a subfolder and call, a, call these Arizona or Nevada. I'm sorry. OK. Now, at this point, we all understand we're coming off my memory card. They're getting changed into DNG. And they're going to go into a Nevada folder inside of pictures. Agreed, everyone? Yeah. I'll, I, I'll come to you in a little bit. All right, now, if I just simply imported all these, I could go to my Nevada folder. Right? Let me do that now. I'm going to go into my Nevada folder. And um, here we go. Here they are. Yep. And so here's a bunch of images. Oh, and look, these are the same exact images. Well, these were all in Nevada. But these top ones here are in, these actually are in Utah. So what I'm going to do is just simply click on those images. And I'm going to drag them over into my Utah folder. Notice how I'm just holding it down here. OK, so I go to Utah. That opens up. These are actually in Zion National Park. That opens up. And they were shot in 2012. 
So I just drop them right into there, and they physically move into a different folder. And that's it. So you can move images back and forth. You can rename your images, all right? So, of course, you can rename your whole folder. I know you guys have a lot of questions. I apologize. I'm going have to have to keep pushing, and I'll hit them at the end if they're still unanswered. OK. So the most important thing is, is upon import, you pay attention to where they're going. And if your images are split up between two states or two different functions, you can easily move them and create new folders later. It's just that simple, you guys. All right? So um, let me go back to the import dialog box again. And that's the destination. OK, does anybody have any questions about the destination box? If not, I'll come to the other questions later. Yes? <laughs> I'm going to come to that. Questions about the destination box? The, the folder that uh, holds pictures. Yes. Is that, is that something you determined, or Lightroom has that as a folder? Good question. The picture folder, everybody has a pictures folder. It's like my pictures, I think, on a PC and pictures on a Mac. That's going to be the default place to where your photographs go. Okay? That's the default place. That does not mean that you have to leave them there. But that's where they're going to go by default. So for me, um, what I actually do is I'd import these images and I would go, and this is important, you guys. I'm going to click up on this arrow here. Notice to the right here, I've got my laptop, but I also have my travel hard drive. That's where I want them to go. So I'm going to go into my Lightroom photos, and then I'm going to come down here and go to locations. And then I'm going to go down here, go to USA, and then go down to Nevada. All right? And that's where I would want them to go. That's my place. So you guys get to choose exactly where you want your images to go. I have a question regarding the, both the source and the destination. Source and destina destination right. questions only, sir. Right. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Uh, I have an external drive. Yep. And usually it maps to a particular letter, like I or J or whatever. Hold that question right there. I'll answer that afterwards. I'll get to keywords in a minute. I, um, on my external drive, put everything into my external drive. I, and I start out on that. I have place it, and I give um, a name to a folder, and then I put the situation X raw. And then, so when it comes, when the destination comes up, I just choose that one. So all the photos go in there. It's not under photos, though. It's well, that's, it, no, OK, so what I, what I just, that's what I just showed you, actually. I chained from photos to my external hard drive. That's exactly what I just showed you. And then, so it's the same thing. And then I'm just, a, I'm you not just it on there. You so guys, you just, there you just choose where you want it to go. So you would just point to your external. OK. All right. Now, you guys, excuse me for moving quick and not answering every question. But um, just to explain myself real quick, every one of you guys in here has a computer. And everyone has your own little personal problems with it. And if I answered everybody's question about their specific computer question, we'd never get through the lecture. So I apologize. I'll be happy to answer your questions if I don't get to them after the class. Truly, I will. All right. So you guys, we have the, um, we have the destination taken care of. There's a few other things up here that are less important, but worth a look. First of all is file handling. Okay? File handling means What's it going to do to the files? Number one, it says render previews. Well, you guys, what we're actually seeing in Lightroom, the program, um, is thumbnails. This is simply talking about the thumbnails. It says, oh, you can just use the embedded thumbnails that are generated from your camera, or you can create big one-to-one -one thumbnails if you want. The difference is, you guys, is, is time. You're either going to get too much time when you're downloading, or you're going to get too much time when you click on it to blow it up. Either or. So it doesn't really matter. If you want the fastest, choose embedded and sidecar. All right. Don't import suspected duplicates is a pretty important one. Because if I downloaded this card and um, I didn't erase it or format it, and I plugged it back in with new images, it would show me um, I could import all the images. Then I'd have a bunch of duplicates. But with this box checked, 
things that have already been imported into my catalog are grayed out. So I know I don't have to import them. All right, file renaming, you know what? I just don't do it, people. Just bring your images in as DC 147603582, doesn't matter. You can rename it later if you want. Um, but if you do, you can go in here and you can set up a whole different type of template and anything you want to rename it, okay? But like I said, it's just more hassle than it's worth. Okay, now the next thing is apply during import. And this is, uh, can be a real time saver, which I would like to share with you guys, um, but we'll come back to a part of this in this afternoon's class. But the part we're gonna cover today is where it says metadata, all right? The metadata is all the information about your photograph. Some metadata is included when you shoot and you bring your image in. So this image was shot at f8 using a white balance of daylight, focal length of 200 millimeters. That's metadata. All right. Um, what also is metadata is things that you can apply afterwards. My name, my copyright, all right? um, my address, my email, whatever. So I urge you guys to go in here and create a simple metadata template. If you choose metadata and go down and click new, you will get this box. All right, and there's a whole bunch of stuff in here that you don't have to pay attention to. All right, because this is going to be applied to every single one of your images that ever gets downloaded. So you wanna keep it really basic, really simple. So you're gonna go to the creator and you're gonna fill in all this information. Now my preset Tim Cooper copyright does just that. So I've got my name, I've got my email address, my website, if people come across it, you know, time says, oh, we need that, that one photograph of whatever. It's something in Virginia, I've got it, they pay me $10 million. So having your, uh, yeah, right? So having your email address and, and stuff in your images is worthwhile. And that's all under the IPTC creator. Now, the other thing I fill out here is um, my IPTC copyright. And I simply just write the word copyrighted and then my name. <coughs> now, all of this can be applied to every single image. No problem. What I don't put in here is keywords or anything like that. Okay? So, this is the Tim Cooper copyright. So you guys, when I come over here and import my images, by default, this says Tim Cooper copyright here. And now I know every single one of my images will have my name in it and my address, so on and so forth. All right? It's pretty much just that simple. And that's the import dialog box. There's really only one thing that we haven't talked about. And that's the difference between copy as DNG and copy. All right. Now, um, you know you can either shoot JPEGs or you can shoot RAW on your camera. All right. I recommend shooting RAW. There's no sense buying a, a camera for hundreds or thousands of dollars and then making it shoot like a point and shoot with a JPEG. Okay. Use your camera. Shooting raw. Now, when you shoot in JPEG, things get baked into your file. Let me give you an analogy. A JPEG is a cookie that you've baked before your guests got there. And inside that cookie, you've put chocolate chips, raisins, and pecans. 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 <laughs> and then they get baked, and there they are. Your guest comes and says, sorry, I'm allergic to, to nuts. You can't serve the cookie, right? A raw image is like you're preparing raw cookie dough beforehand, and then you've got your pecans and your raisins and your chocolate chips, and when the guest gets there, you say, what do you want? And then you bake it fresh. Primo, all right? So the JPEG is getting baked inside the camera. So if you have something along the lines of, uh, let's say you've, you've set your picture style to um, shoot portrait, Okay, that's gonna make the flesh tones really nice, you know, low in contrast, low in saturation. That gets baked right into the JPEG, all right? But now I set my camera on portrait and I shoot in raw. That's a raw image. What's happening is 
that picture style or setting of portrait doesn't get baked into the camera or into the file, it gets pulled along with it. And when it gets in a Lightroom, it gets lost. So now I just have a raw file. And what I have to do now is go into Lightroom and choose portrait and then it gets applied. And you think, why don't I just shoot a JPEG? Well, because you can do so much other things to your raw file without degrading the image quality. Okay. The problem is, is that the raw file cannot be completely decoded by Lightroom. So there's a lot of things inside of that raw file that Lightroom cannot pick up on. A lot of metadata. All right. So when Lightroom writes metadata into that raw file, let's say our copyright, right? Or our keywords, or the fact that you cropped it or made it a little brighter or made it a little bit darker. All that is metadata. And it can't get written into the raw file. So it gets put into what's called a sidecar file. That sidecar file is just like you think, along with a motorcycle, right? You hit a bump, boom, and it's gone. Well, you haven't lost your original image, but you've lost your crop, your lightning, your copyright, everything. Make sense, people? All right. So when I bring my raw images in, I copy them as a DNG. A DNG is also a raw file, but imagine it's like this. Imagine it takes the raw file and just puts it into a bigger container. And this bigger container can now contain cropped, lightened, copyright, any metadata you put in. Now as you move it, it all goes along with it. That's the only difference. They're both still raw files. All right? They're both, there's no harm done, there's no quality loss whatsoever, except now it's all in one big container. There's no good reason not to go to DNG. So I turn all my stuff into DNG. All right? Now, if you're importing half of a card that's JPEG and half that's DNG, you can still choose that command because it just ignores the JPEGs and leaves them alone. So no harm done. It's really, it's just simple and it's a good way to work. All right. You can't, you can't copy as DNG and JPEG. That's correct. It just ignores it. So in DNG, all those camera settings you set will show. You can see it on the thumbnail or? And if, you're, if your camera is, if your camera is uh, coming off of a Canon or a Nikon camera, that has proprietary raw formats, all of those settings don't get brought into Lightroom. They're just gone, okay? That's why when you see a really nice, super sharp, saturated image on the back of your camera, and it's a, that's a JPEG preview, and then you download that raw image into photo, or to Lightroom, and it looks all flat and colorless, and you're like, what happened? Mm -hmm. That's why. This is the raw image. Now it's up to us to make it look good. We've now imported um, a group of images. Now, let me just recap here. All right. When Lightroom starts, it creates a catalog. You're now in your new catalog. You import your first batch of images from your camera. You're going to pay attention to where they go. And you're going to create a folder hierarchy, whether that's by date or whether that's by location or family, friends, whatever you want to do there. All right. So if they're coming off of a card, it's copy as DNG. Now you turn around and say, OK, well, now I've got 500 images on my computer that I want to bring into Lightroom. Our choice is add or move. Everybody agree? All right. So now you could plug in an external hard drive that was from your last computer, and it has 500 images on it. And you want to keep all your images into one place. So when you import them, are you going to copy, move, or add? You can either copy them or you can move them. Because if you add them, that means you have to have your external hard drive plugged in to see them. Because Lightroom can track images on this laptop. It can you know, uh, watch images on this hard drive, that hard drive, that hard drive. You don't want to do that, people. Because that means you have to have all those drives plugged in at once to see all of your images. So keep them all in one catalog in one place. OK, you guys. So we've imported our images. We now know we can uh, import by copy, moving, or add, change them into DNGs. Now comes the next important part. The really robust part of Lightroom is the fact that it is a database. And the database works best when there's lots of information given to it. I can find any sorts of images in a snap because I've added things into that. 
that could be keywords, that could be a star rating, that could be a color label, it could be a flag, and it could be all of the metadata that's already included. Lens length, ISO, this is incredible. So if I'm in the library module and I click on Lightroom Photos here, you can see that I've got uh, 37,000 photos in this catalog, all right? So if I was to go up here to where it says library filter at the top, I could say, you know what? I want to see um, all my favorite images that are of canyons. And what I could do is choose text and type in canyons. And then I can choose attribute and choose uh, three stars. And now, just that fast, you guys, out of 37,000 images, here is all my favorite canyon shots that I've ever taken. Like that. And those images can be in folders God knows where. All over my computer. Who knows? It doesn't matter. Because I've taken the time to add stars and wrote the word canyon in somewhere, I can do that. I could do something like, um, let's say, I want to see all of my favorite canyon shots that were shot with a 24 millimeter lens. I could go in and choose metadata and go over and show all dates, camera. Oh, here's the ones that were shot with my Canon 1DS. Here's the ones that were shot with my Nikon D4. Do you see how powerful this is? I mean, I could say all cameras, but my lens was um, a 16 to 35. Well, there's all of my five or three star canyon shots made with a 16 to 35 millimeter lens. So I cannot <laughs> tell you how incredible this is, but you've got to do a little legwork up front. You've got to do a little, uh, you've got to add some of this information in. Of course, the metadata, like the lens, the focal length, the ISO, it's all there. You don't have to do anything with that. But the things you do want to do is to add in star ratings, to add labels, and of course what's most important is your keywords, okay? So let's address keywords. Um, when I uh, first download images, <clears throat> one of the first things I'll do is keyword. And that is because when I shoot, typically what's going to be on that card is mostly from one event or one location or something like that, right? So I go and shoot the Hoover Dam. Well, all of those images are in Nevada. All of those images could have the word dam in it. They could all have lake in it. Um, I'm starting big, all right? Start with the big things first. Now, if you get into um, a folder that's got several different types of things, then you could do them one at a time, or you can do them multiple times, right? So here's a folder that has a mix of both architectural and landscape shots in here, all right? So ultimately, I want the word landscape as a keyword, and I want the word architecture as a keyword. So what I can do is choose all my architecture images first, and of course, this is much easier if you know, they're separated out by folder, and those are all my architecture ones. I go over to keywording here, and again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to be very clever. I'm going to read the screen. <laughs> Click here to add keywords. Right. So I'm going to click there, and I'm simply going to type in the word architecture. And of course, as soon as I type ARC, I get all of the previous keywords that I've typed as hints. So now I could just go down here and click on architecture. And of course, that's already in there. All right. Now, if I wanted to keep typing, I could do something like um, buildings, uh, night lights. I'm just making stuff up now. I don't know if it applies to all of them. But notice I'm just typing, comma, typing, comma, typing, comma, just like you do regular. And you just go across with all the keywords that you want. If these are all selected over here, all the keywords will go in. All right. If you only have one selected, then only one keyword goes in. Make sense? 
Now, of course, to get this applied, because it's not up in this gray box yet, I have to hit my Enter key. And as soon as I hit my Enter key, all the images come up. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to my rest of my images, which are all landscapes. And I'll click there, go to the bottom, hit Shift. Now I've selected all those, and I come up to my keywords, and I type in landscape, which is already up here. Okay. Now, if I was in this folder, and I wanted to do a search of just the images that said architecture, I could just type text, arc, eh, oh, it's tough, tough, architecture. All right, and now what happens is look at all my landscape images are not being shown at the moment because I'm filtering for the word architecture. So adding in keywords is super simple, you guys. You, the hard part is doing it. <laughs> you just got to do it. What I recommend is start big and work small. Okay, so. You can have a bazillion keywords and you could simply type them in here. But remember, if what you're shooting is actually um, uh, location specific, let's say you take a trip to San Francisco and you're there for a whole week and you, every image you download should have the word California, San Francisco in it, right? So you could go to you could add the keyword straight away, which I recommend, or you could even go to it after the fact. So let me go down here to um, my locations, and I will go to California and San Fran area. Okay, now there's 338 images in here. All right. All I'm going to do is go edit, select all. Now. I could go in here into the keywords and type San Francisco, comma, California, but that doesn't need to be a keyword because there's already a place for it, you guys. Let me scroll down here a little bit. And as I do, you're going to see we have keyword list and we have metadata. All right, under the metadata tab, if you keep scrolling down, ah, look at this. We have sublocation, city, and state. Well, why type a state and a city into a keyword when it's got its own little special place already? All right. So right now it says mixed, which means some of these images in here have not been keyworded by the photographer. Tisk tisk. So I'm just going to go to state and type California. And I'm going to go to city. Oh, and I'm going to type San Francisco. And there we go. All right, you guys. Now, of course, that's happening to all 338 images done. Okay, So start big, then work small. So it could be um, Christmas party. Okay, Well, Christmas, every single image gets selected. Then I select the 20 images of my family, and I type in the word family. And then I select the 20 images of my friends, and I type in the word friend. Start big, work small. The more keywords you put in that are meaningful, the easier it is to find things. So you guys, uh, putting your keywords in first is a huge help in being able to find your images later. So I really recommend you guys do this, all right? Now, once you get enough keywords in, you're gonna go, if you go down to this keyword set and keyword list, you're gonna see a whole host of keywords. That's a horrible way to find them, all right? Um, so it's easier just to type and then watch as the, um, these options come up and then just click. That's going to be the easiest way to do it. Because a lot of people will go down into the keyword list and they'll try to find a specific keyword. Well, you could have hundreds or thousands in there. Ugh, you know, you don't want that. So simply typing in your keywords. Does anybody have any question about adding keywords yes. into photographs? Or yes, sir. Folder, that's going to be an individual. The question is, what do you put on folder labels versus what do you put into keywords? That's entirely up to you. For me, my folder labels are a big, broad category. State, city, national park, so on and so forth. I got you. You can put your hand down. I got you. Um, 
the keywords would be anything. So I could be in San Francisco, but some shots have fountains, some have pigeons, some have mountains, some have ocean, some have bridges. That's all keywords. Make sense? Yes. Okay, you guys. So, oh, yes. On the filtering, when you filter by date, what kind of date does it take? The creation date or the filing date? Um, it'll take the creation date. Okay, you guys, so that's typically my first step when I download images, is just to simply put in the keywords. Now, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is get rid of the obvious stinkers. There's gonna be ones in there that are not very good. Anybody have bad images from time to time? <laughs> All right, so I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. So there's a couple ways you can do this. There's three different ways you can do it, actually. So that would be the word several, I believe. Flagging, rating, and labels. All right? Now, I will tell you my little system. Whether you choose to use it or not, it's entirely up to you because there's as many different good systems out there as there's people in this room. So I can't tell you what your best system is going to be. I can only tell you what I do. All right. When I um, first download my images, um, I will keyword them, and then I'll do a quick look through them. And I will find the ones that I really want to work on. Okay? I actually don't bother going to throw out the stinkers straight away, because that's the majority of them. All right? That's more work. So why don't I just find the good ones? That's less work. All right. Now, what I'll do is if I want to work on an image, I will give it one star. All right, so my initial download will have keywords and some images that have one stars in them. Now, if um, I've worked on an image a little bit, but it is not yet complete, it gets two stars. Once an image is finished, it gets three stars. Obviously, I'm not gonna finish an image unless I really like it. So then three stars become my favorites. All right, and then you could do something else like maybe four stars are ones that have been in gallery shows or four stars are one you've shared with other people or you can go on. So I'd leave extra stars for, for extra help later on down the line. This way, you guys, what I can do is I can sit back and think, well, you know, today I, I wanna work on, um, let's see, I wanna work on some waterfall images. So I'll just type in the word waterfall and one star and up pops all my images that are ready that I wanna work on. You know, where I'll think, gosh, you know, I want to finish some waterfall images. Okay, two stars. These are already partially worked on. I want to see all my three stars to upload them to Facebook or to my website. Three star waterfalls. Boom, there they are. Upload them. All right. So that's the way that I, my system works. But to fully um, explain all the systems that you can use, the first one is what they call a flagging system. And I want you guys to notice what just happened here. I just clicked on another folder called flagging. Can you all see that up there? And it shows me that there's 18 images in here, but yet I don't see anything. Why? That's right. Look at the top. My filter bar is filtering for architecture. So I'm just going to go up here and click none. Now suddenly I see all my images. All right. So the flagging. Um, is another way to separate out your images from one another. There's unflagged, which these are. Then there's flagged and rejected. Okay. If I go up to my um, bar, I can see, uh, I never use this up here, so I have to find it. Uh, where is that? There we go. I don't even know what it is, you guys. <laughs> yeah, the X, the X key is reject, and the P key is pick. All right? So it is up here somewhere. Like I said, I found it two years ago, and I've never looked back because I just memorized the keywords. Set flag. Set flag. There we go. Here it goes. So here it is, you guys. Set flag. Flagged is P. Rejected is X. All right? So what I can do is I could go through all of these images and 
as I click, like I choose X, it jumps to the next one. I choose X, it jumps to the next one. I choose P, it jumps to the next one. You see what I'm saying, you guys? And that automatically goes forward. Now, um, what I'm going to do is, if I'm looking though and wanting to see if somebody's eyes are shut or blinking or something, obviously looking at this grid mode is not so good. So what I can do is tap my space bar and that will give me the large sized image. All right. Now all my images are selected. So I'm just going to um, unselect them all and click on the first one. Now I'm just going to do this really super randomly you guys. I look at it and I say nope X rejected. Nope X rejected. Nope X rejected. No, eh, that's okay, P. X, 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 P. P, 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 X. And you just go along the line here. Now when I come back to my grid, look what it looks like. All my X's are kind of grayed out. So now when I go back into that folder, I don't have to say which ones did I choose, which ones did I didn't, you know? It's really easy to see. These are not deleted, they're still here but they just get grayed out with a little pirate flag. Brilliant, right? And the one with the white flag is the pick. And at any time, you can go back and click on an image, and if I just now hit the word X, it gets rejected. If I click back on it and hit P, it becomes a pick again. So this stuff is not permanent. But a lot of people like this, especially portrait photographers, because you can move through a bunch of images really fast and set your picks. Super simple, all right? Now maybe I would go through here and I would say just show me my picks and then I'd go through them and maybe just hit, you know, give a couple of one stars or something like this. But now of course you've gotta be careful because if your clients are people, you don't really wanna give star ratings to the images. That just begs, begs for an uncomfortable situation. You know, <laughs> they see a one star and they're like, why is it not a five star? You know, or you show them the five star and they go, well, let me see the three stars. Nah, don't do it. Don't put stars on people. They don't like it. <laughs> now, how do you look at, when you want to see it again, which one do you, you just look at click on? Click if I just want to see this image, I click on it and hit my space bar. All right, the library module works this way, you guys. This pattern right down here is the grid. This is the loop. So if I look at this and I hit the loop, it goes up there. And if I go to X and Y, it becomes a comparison. So if I wanted to compare these two images, I click on this one and this one. And then if I hit X, Y, I see them side by side. If you only want to see the picks, can you do that? Oh yeah, you can. You would just do the filter bar. Oh. Just like you did with everything else. Yep. All right. Now you guys, the beautiful thing about the, um, the X, Y is that you can see the images much bigger too. So let me just go back to my, my loop mode for a minute realize that I'm only seeing this one. Do you guys notice that this is the brightest image mm -hmm. and this is a little bit grayed out? They're both selected, but this one is the most selected. <laughs> All right? So this is the active image, but both of them are selected. So if I tap my space bar right now, I'm blowing up and looking at this one. I tap my space bar again, it goes back to regular size. If I want to see them side by side, I hit the X and the Y. All right, now what's cool is if I hit my space bar, they both blow up. So if I wanna see if somebody's eyes are sharp, you know I can go back and forth between these. If I grab, both images move at the same time. So you can check out all of the different, all the different aspects of that right from within here. All right, so that's pretty cool, the X, Y. Now, let me go back to the grid and um, and that's it, there's my, there's my folder, all right? So the question was, um, if, uh, can I see just, just the picks? Well, if you click attribute, you've got your flags here, right? So, but this gets confusing now, and I don't want you guys to be confused. So notice I just clicked on a flag and nothing happened? That, that makes me sad. Why did nothing happen? Yeah, because I also have three stars in there. So not a bad idea, you guys, is anytime you go to the library filter, simply click none, and then just start all by itself, all over. Um, click on attribute, click, the click one of the flags. There we go. 
Yes, you can do it on the bottom as well. Yep. So you guys, um, I've got to be honest with you. This is why I never use the flags because they drive me nuts. But there it is. There's just there's just the flagged the picked images. Now, of course, the other images haven't disappeared. They're not deleted. They're just not in this view. As soon as I click none, again, then my filter is completely gone. And here we go. Same thing with the sun. And at what yep. point do you dump the ones you don't like? Um, you know, I, it depends. What, what point do I throw them out? Everybody's a little bit differently. Some people don't throw out anything. I cull from time to time, once a year. I'll just go back through some stuff. but. You know, if it was, if they're client pictures, I never throw any of them out. You know, if they're my own, I'm much more <laughs> chop them, get them out of the way. Yep. Sometimes I have a picture and I don't want to use it anymore, so I got somewhere I put remove. And the other choice is to get it off the, get it off the uh, hard drive. If I hit remove, does that mean it's off the hard It doesn't mean it's off the hard drive, it's somewhere, right? When you guys delete an image, if I wanted to delete this X image, and I hit delete, I get the choice that says delete from disk or remove. I feel if I'm of strong enough conviction that I've hit that delete key, I want it gone. Get it out of here. You don't want to delete a bunch of the image, or you don't want to remove a bunch of images because they're still going to be on your hard drive. They're just not a part of the Lightroom catalog anymore. So if you want to get rid of them, you're hitting the delete key and then hit delete from disk and y'all are set, they're gone, okay? Of course, they're not actually truly gone. Anybody know where they've gone? They've gone to the trash. And as long as you don't empty the trash, they still sit there. So empty your trash and get rid of them. Okay, so next up, you guys, now that you know how to do your flags, is um, the ratings. And this couldn't, be, this couldn't be any easier, folks. You can find your ratings in the same place that you found your um, <clears throat> flag, which is under photo, and you could set rating to one, two, three, four, five. Now, if you guys are working in Lightroom a lot, I mean, oh wait, let's, let's take a time out here for a second. How y'all doing? Good. Good to see you. Um, we're photographers, right? We want to be taking pictures. We don't want to spend a lot of time in front of the computer if we don't have to. So if you do anything more than a couple of times, remember the shortcut, all right? I can't imagine going up to this menu bar for anything. It's just so time consuming. You have to go all the way up there, then click, then drag down, then drag over, then down, and then over, and then click again. That takes years off my life. So once you see it, photo, Set rating right there. One, two, three, four, five. That's it, you guys. So now you don't ever have to, you don't have to forget that, right? So if I click on the first one, I say, oh, I, you know, I kind of like that. That's a three star. You know, that one's a one star. This one's a two star. And I'm literally just tapping the one, two, and three key. And that's all you have to do to put your stars on your image. Okay, that's a lot faster than, uh, that's the fastest way to do it, all right? Now we've already talked about how you can use your star ratings and when not to do it. People, clients, all right? Now the last one is labels. <clears throat> and labels can be anything. Some people use labels. Um, well, I know a lot of portrait and wedding photographers that will use labels rather than numbers. So maybe all of their, uh, their killer shots, their hero shots are all green. You know, and um, you know, maybe the second cut is red. You guys can make up any system you want, all right? The way I use labels is to group a bunch of images together. Um, so I do a lot of shooting for HDR or for putting panoramas together um, or for stitching uh, images together for depth of field. So I end up with a lot of these sorts of things, groupings of images. Um, this particular uh, this particular grouping right here, I shot and I montaged those three images together to get more lights, all right? This is an exposure difference. This is a panorama, all right? So there's lots of reasons why you might want to put images together. So what I'll do is I will click on these images and then simply hit 
six, seven, eight, or nine. And if one, two, three, four, five are stars, six, seven, eight, and nine are the colored labels. So if I just tap my six, they all become red. Then I can go to the next grouping, click on the first one, shift click on the last one, I can hit seven. And now they're color separated. Because a lot of times I may have a grouping and then another grouping, and they look identical, but there's something different in between them. I want to know straight away, and I, never, I, I know best right when I download my images. So that's the time to do it. If you wait until later, you're in deep trouble. All right? So that's really as simple as that is, putting labels on your images. So at this point, you guys, you've added your keywords. You've given it a star, maybe a flag, perhaps a label. Now, doesn't matter where your images are on your computer, you can find them by clicking on your all photographs up here. Go to text, type in architecture and attribute. I'm gonna take that flag off. I can show my two stars that maybe have the color red. Okay. I used the term um, when I went in here, when I went into this uh, labels, <clears throat> I used the word grouping them together. And what I mean is visually grouping them together, just so at a glance I could see these three, these three, those four, okay? But there actually is another way to physically group them together, and it's called grouping. <laughs> and and um, it's actually called stacking. Um, if I get, once again go up to photo, is that where they are? Yeah, here it is, stacking. See how it says group into stack? And I can actually see that right now because I have three images selected. If I just have one image selected and I go up to photo, I can't group it into a stack because it's by itself, all right? So I click these three and then what I can do is stack them one on top of each other to save real estate on your screen. So. I go photo, stacking, group into stack. What is that? Oh, command G. I'm going to remember that. So now, all of those images have been stacked and you get that little three on the upper left hand corner. That tells you there's two other images below that. If I want to see those images, I simply click right on that and they all pop out. If I want them to go back, I click again and they're stacked. All right. So I could choose these four images, hit command G, these three images, hit command G, these three, hit command G, and so on. And before you know it, what's going to happen is you're going to have all your images. This folder is going to look quite cleaned up, but you're going to know that all those images are part of another group. All right. So now I've made a few mistakes. So I want to make some changes. This whole folder can now be seen as just a few images, right? But this one should have been in that stack. So if I click on this image and then that one and hit stack, they all go together, all right? What happens if one of the images doesn't tell you much, like this one? I can't really see what that is. What I'm gonna do is click on those, and I would actually much rather see this one for quick reference, right, you guys? So I'm going to click on that image, and I want to promote that into the stack. All right. The keyboard command for that, I'm not even going to tell you what it is because it's kind of confusing, but you'll just look at it here, and you'll see move to top of stack, or move up in stack, or down in stack. But when I move it to the top of the stack and then close it up, now I'm seeing that brightest one on the top of the stack. All right, just makes it a little easier when you're going back through your images and looking. All right. Would you rate them before you stack them? Would I rate them before I stack them? Perhaps. It just depends. Typically, um, uh, would I rate them before I stack them? I, it really depends on the situation. You know, I don't feel strongly one way or the other. Yep. So that's the uh, that's the stacking. Yep. Can I stack virtual copies? Or, or, uh, I've, 
Uh, virtual copies, you were right. Can I group them? Yes. You can group a virtual copy. That's how I find stuff out. Yeah, just really, <laughs> nothing like trial and error. So you guys, what do you all think? Are we good so far? Yeah. All right. So let's kind of go back to the beginning. We have our one Lightroom catalog that we're working in. We want all of our photographs in one place on our computer. Then what we want to do is when we add images into our catalog, we want to keyword them straight away and put some stars on them so we can find them very easily later. All right. That's kind of the synopsis. I guess I could have just told you that in five minutes right in the beginning, <laughs> right? But there it is. All right, now, <clears throat> what else can we do? Well, you guys, there's some things that are important to know. One of those things is that once you begin to use Lightroom as your program of choice, you always use Lightroom. There's, you don't go back to Bridge. Don't go back. I know you're thinking about it too. You're like, eh, there we go. <laughs> don't go back to Bridge. And don't go to your window. You know, I don't know how many people, you know, I, on my workshops will end up going to this, you know, this window and they'll say, well, you know, I've got some images in here and I'm just going to take those images here and I'm going to move them into, no, no, never, bad, no, never here, ever again. If you want to work on your images, you work on your images inside of Lightroom. If you do this outside of Lightroom, guess what's happened? You get the question mark. So how would you reconnect it? How do you reconnect it? <laughs> you pray. Now, the only way you can reconnect it is to go find it. So if you moved an image and then you forget where you moved it, you're not going to find it. Yeah, I mean, there's ways. I'm just being melodramatic. Come on, man. Don't, you know. <laughs> let, me go, uh, let me go into um, Lightroom class, into the library module, um, into flagging. And I'm going to take these images, and I'm going to put them into keywords. Very bad. I've done a very naughty thing here, right? Now, when I go back into Lightroom, and I go into flagging, I get all of these question marks. Because Lightroom is saying, hey, I don't know what you did with them. I wasn't a part of the, the whole ordeal. So one of two things has to happen. I either have to remember or I have to do a search. So if you happen to remember, what you can do is click on this question mark. So flagging cannot be used because the original could not be found. Would you like to locate it? Oh, yes, please. So I go to locate. Now this is where my memory comes in. That's right. I moved them to keywords. Right? And here it is. And check this out, you guys. This is the greatest thing since, what's that saying? Tequila? Uh, sliced bread. Um, find nearby missing photos. Very nice. And then I hit select. And it says, whoa, look at, I'm in the flagging folder. They're not there. They're actually in keywords. See that? So it brings them back in. Now it's up to me to go move them again. And if this is starting to sound like a big pain in the butt, it is. And that's why you, want, you don't want to move things outside of Lightroom. Now they're back in the flagging folder. All right. Now, if you can't remember what you did, one little hint is that this, the, the title of that slide that I couldn't find says flagging two. Well, then what you can do is go into your computer when I say a computer, I mean outside of Lightroom, and just do a find search and type in that, like flagging-9, and then hopefully it'll find it somewhere on your computer. So that's the only thing you can do. So the lesson is, is do not do anything to your photographs outside of Lightroom. Everything gets done within Lightroom itself, OK? Brings me to the next point, which I want to do. Um, the, uh, uh, what you're seeing here in the Lightroom library module, which is where we're working, and then up in the develop module, which is where we'll be working this afternoon, this is exactly the same as Bridge. 
The develop module is exactly the same as the raw converter in Photoshop. Exactly. The only thing different is it's a little gray. Uh, that, that's it. All right, so they're the same thing. The library filter does exist in Bridge, but it's not as robust because it's not a database. So it has to run on the computer search system, which is a lot slower. So this is wicked fast compared mm -hmm. to Photoshop's That's search. What I'm trying to figure out is if it would benefit me and, and the speed of it and the fact that it is a database. Yeah, it is a database and so it will be, it will be faster. Exactly. The question uh, that the young lady in the back asked was, oh, I'm not sure if she asked this, but her question was about backing up her hard drive. You guys, on my external hard drive, which is right here called Tim's Travel, I have my Lightroom catalog, all of my 30, 37,000 images, and then B&H stuff. All right. Well, I now take that hard drive and copy the whole thing to another hard drive. Now my catalog is backed up and all my photographs. That's a full backup. Just hitting yes to Lightroom's backup only backs up your catalog. Okay, Why people? Even Why even bother? Because the Lightroom catalog will become corrupt from time to time, and if you lose your Lightroom catalog, then you're in big trouble. Um, it, if you, yeah, Time Machine's a whole different animal, but not everybody has Time Machine. So I'm saying you have to back up. You have Time Machine, so that's backing up, right? Yeah, okay. That's, that's so, so it's a done deal, right? So you guys, I just need for you to understand that you need to back up your photographs as well as your catalog. Is that clear to everyone? Now there's a couple of programs, Lightroom will not do it for you. This is, other, this is outside of Lightroom now. We're talking about hard drive backups. This gets into techie, nerdy, geeky stuff, computer people stuff, right? So Acronis is one backup program for the PC, A-C-R-O-N-I-S, Acronis. Uh, <laughs> the other one is a Carbon Copy Cloner for a Mac and Super Duper. Those are both Mac programs. Um, so check those, check those out, you guys, all right? <clears throat> We began, we began the class by saying, it's nice to have all of your photographs and your catalog in one place. For me, that one place is my external hard drive. This is clear to you guys at this point, right? All right, so whenever I launch my catalog, I launch this catalog right here by double clicking on it. That launches that particular catalog. I import the images, I watch where they're going, they all go in here. All right, for many of you guys, you will have your pictures folder, um, you will have your pictures folder, and it's going to look more like this. Hold on. Where here's your user, you've got Lightroom the program, inside of your pictures folder is your Lightroom catalog and your photographs. All right, that's the way most of you guys are set up. All right, fair enough. Well, if you start and continue the work this way, piece of cake, it's all good. But what happens if you make mistakes and you create more than one catalog? Or you're on the road and you create another catalog and then you go home. Now you've got images and a catalog over here, images and a catalog over here, and you've got the Lightroom program on both computers and everything starts to get really confusing. You bite your fingernails, pull your hair out, it's unhealthy. Okay, so what are we to do? Well, remember, there's your catalog, which is a record of your images, and then there's your images. If you understand this, you can get yourself out of a bind. All right. So now let's say I'm on the road and I'm off in Nevada shooting the Hoover Dam um, and I create a catalog. So let's say I have 200 images in that catalog, but while I'm on the road, I actually go through and I crop them and I change their color and I lighten them and darken them and do all of this stuff. Well now, that catalog information is very important to me almost as important as the images themselves. Agreed, you guys? All right, if I just took from my external hard drive, if I just took my photographs and transferred them to my desktop, then opened this Lightroom catalog and imported them, I'd have all my photographs in one place. But I wouldn't have all my cropping, all of my lightning, all my darkening. Agreed? All right, so what you do Instead, 
is you will actually do something called export as a catalog. All right. So what I would do is I'd go to my full or I'd go to my let's just call it my Hoover Dam catalog and I would go in there and I would choose all my images and I would go file export as catalog. All right. Now let's just see what this does. I'll choose three images instead. <laughs> file export as catalog. All right. Now it's going to say, hey, where do you want this catalog to go to? So uh, I don't know. Hopefully you'll have your external hard drive plugged in to your desktop, right? So I could say, well, I don't want them back on the external. But you know what? Move them over to this other place, to my desktop. And then look at what this says here. Export selected photos only. That's great. That's why it's important to have all of your images selected. All right. So now I'm in my Nevada Hoover Dam Lightroom catalog. There's 200 images. I select them all. File, export as catalog. Boom. And I hit export catalog. And the catalog and the images will move to where I want them to go. Now, they're on my desktop. Then what I'll do is I close out of Lightroom. And then I open up my primary Lightroom catalog. And I say, file import from another catalog. There you go. And then I just point to that catalog that I've freshly moved over. And it's going to import all that information. And then you're going to get other questions like, well, you know, do you want to move the images to a new location? And we're back to our, that full import scheme again, right, you guys? But in this way, it's very easy to consolidate various different Lightroom catalogs that you may have. There's something in here that is really going to benefit you guys when it comes to um, <clears throat> when it comes to keeping track of your images. So now we know how to import images. We know how to find them. Now how do we track them? Well, track them. Right? So for example, um, I want to know which images are up on my Facebook page. I want to know which images are in a gallery over here. And I want to know which images are uh, someplace else. I can do that very easily with metadata. I don't have to create constantly create new files and copies of files and all of that. You can keep track of your images by something that's called collections. And you guys will see up over here to the left, I've got collections here. Now, if I click that down arrow, you're going to see I have a bunch of collections, all kinds of them. All right. Lightroom also offers another thing, which I will not have time to go over, called publish services. All right. So a publish service is, as you can see, Facebook, Flickr, SmugMug, Photo Shelter, things like this. So let me give you a real simple example, and then I'm going to come back to your question specifically with collections. Um, uh, I took on this project that um, every single day I shoot one iPhone photograph. 365 day project. Okay. So what I do is I upload those to Facebook, to Flickr, to SmugMug, to my blog site, all these places. All right? These published services help me do that. And they keep track of what's on there. So I can't do it in here because I don't have my 365 day in here. but. If I clicked on Urban Decay, I could tell that my Urban Decay folder on Facebook, these images are in there. And at the top, it says Modified Photos to Republish. I've actually reworked these images. And it's telling me, hey, do you want to reload those back up into Facebook? That's pretty cool, right? So the um, same thing here. I could go down to. Um, uh, my 365 day project here in SmugMug and find out that these were the first images that I started in there. All right. The idea is, is that Lightroom can track all this stuff for you. So if you want to know what stuff's up in your Facebook, you don't even have to do it because you could just use the publish service. But if you want to track other things like images that you've printed or images that are in galleries or anything like that, you're going to use what's called a collection. All right. So you guys understand that when I'm in my folders, if I go to, um, 
if I go to this folder, I'm seeing what's the contents of that folder. Agreed, everybody? OK, so here we are in, in the rating folder. Now, if I wanted to make, let's say, a collection of images that, have, that are um, in a gallery, OK, what I could do is I can click on these, uh, these particular images. This is totally random. Yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now, I've clicked on these four images because they're in a gallery. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to Collections and simply hit Plus. And it says Create Collection. When I click Create Collection, it allows me an opportunity to name the collection. And I'll say um, Soho Gallery. Now it says, do you want to be a top level or do you want it nested inside of a collection set? Well, I'll just do top level for now. Include selected photos? Oh, yes, please. Thank you for asking. Right? And then I hit Create. And now, here's my Soho collection. There's my four images. So right now, I'm looking at these four images. Did I move them anywhere? No. You guys, they're still in the same folder that they lived in before. All right, but this is just a view of a certain image, of certain images. All right, now the other thing is they call me up and they say, hey, we need, um, we need a few more images for the gallery. So we choose this one and then we choose that one and I send it off to the gallery. Then I just click on those two and then literally just drag them into the Soho gallery. All right, now there's six in there. This is what we call a dumb collection. It doesn't know much. Just drag and drop. All right? There's things called smart collections, which are awesome. <laughs> this is an unawesome collection. A smart collection, you can create all the parameters that you want. So I could say, give me a collection of my three-star images that show sky in them. And every time I rate a new sky image with three stars, it automatically moves into that collection. So let me show you what I've done. I've created some collection sets. And you're going to see here it says, um, this is a collection set because it looks like a drawer. And this looks more like a folder, so that's a collection. My collection set is three star photographs, two star photographs, and one star photographs. If I wanted to see all of my three star architecture images, I just click here, and there they are. If I want to see my three star black and white, I click there. There they are. Three star earth, there they are. All right? Now, to create these collections is actually quite simple. You just need to set certain parameters. So if I choose the plus button and I hit Create Smart Collection, it says, OK, Tim, what do you want to name it? Well, I'll name this the B&H Smart Collection. All right. Now, what criteria does it need to match? Well, let's say the rating is going to equal three stars. Well, at this point, this is going to pull every three star image on my computer into this collection set. But you can refine it. You could say, um, and look at all this stuff you can refine it by, you guys. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Let's do camera is 1DS. Uh, you know what? That's too specific, and that might not work. I don't have enough time to play. All right, let's do um, uh, label color is red. That's good. And um, let's go down to any searchable metadata contains uh, uh, just because we've been talking about it, waterfalls. And we hit create. Huh. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. Waterfalls was capitalized. Could be. Waterfalls may have been capitalized. What I'm going to do, you guys, is I'm just going to actually double click on this folder. And it brings it back up again. Let's forget the red. And let's just try waterfalls. Only one. All right? But you get the idea, right? 
Let's do something like this. There we go. So here's 73 images that all have three stars that have the word landscape written in them somewhere. Do you see how powerful this is? By putting in a little metadata, by putting in a keyword, basically, you guys, this is just like searching, except it's a saved search. So that's why I went in and I created three stars, and I did all my categories, sky, earth, architecture, clients, things like that. Then I did two stars, same thing. Then I did one star, same thing. So at any given time, I can just click on them, and I know they're continually updated. I'm always going to see what's in my computer at that particular rating, at that particular keyword. They're magnificent, and it's frightening what you can do as far as these things go. Go into your smart collections, you guys, and just check out a few that Lightroom has made for you. They even, they even have ones that are pre-made that says, show me all, all the images that don't have any keywords. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then it just show, you hit a keyword, and it disappears. You hit another keyword, it disappears. Oh, it's killer. It's killer. You guys, I got to stop. <laughs> I got to stop. I got to stop because I'm out of water and my throat's dry. And besides, it's almost 3 o'clock. And there's a couple things I want to talk with you about before we go. Oh, you are ready to jump out, weren't you? You've just had enough of me, haven't you? <laughs> a couple of things, you guys. First of all, thanks again for coming out. Uh, B&H appreciates it. I appreciate it. And um, it's good to see you all. I hope I see you guys. How many people are coming to the afternoon class? Yes. OK. OK, so we're all together again. The next thing is, um, as David said, um, I do a lot of teaching. And so, you guys, I have a really robust schedule as far as workshops all over the place, not to mention local classes in DC, sometimes local classes up here, um, gallery showings. Um, if you guys sign my email list, I promise you, I do not send you guys weekly emails. I send them out like once a month, and it'll tell you things like, oh, I'm having a sale on my DVDs, or these workshops are coming up. My 2013 schedule is up. Once you guys sign my mailing list, you'll get to know before the public does. So when the workshops fill up, you'll be in the know before the general public does. So I ask you guys to maybe sign this on the way out or this afternoon. I appreciate it. Write legibly, you guys, because i got to put all that stuff in the computer. <laughs> really tough. So that's it. We'll see you guys in the afternoon. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.